Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my July reading review. In the month of July 2024, I read a ton of books. I actually didn't think I'd get this far, but I actually uh, finished up a little early, so I was able to sneak in a few extra books. And uh, this was a very all over the place mo a month. I had some, you know, great books, some amazing top tier books. I had some mid, it's okay books. And I had one of my worst, my for sure my worst book of the year, one of my worst books I've read ever. So who boy, is there a wide swath of types of books to talk about. For my reading stats, I, uh, I read about 6,300 pages in the month of July. Uh, it's not a record, but that's a, you know, on the high end, I usually do about four to 5,000. So 6,300 is pretty good. I did 13 books total read, 12 novels, one short story collection. And uh, here were the genres of the books. I had one legal thriller. I had one horror book. I had one middle grade fantasy. I had two Star Trek books, two Star Wars novels. I had three science fiction novels, and I had three epic fantasy novels. So uh, that was a lot of reading. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my worst book and work my way up to my best book. And truly, the top two books of the year or of the month are two of my top two books of the year so far. Like, they're great books. So I can't wait to get to those. But we have to start with the negative. And I don't like being this uh, negative or anything, so I'm just going to have to rip the Band-Aid off and talk about it real quick. Um, I don't give out one stars very often. It's very rare for me to give out a one star, like on Goodreads and stuff. And so if I've given out a one star, you know it's uh, it's bad. For example, I've read about 700 books on that I've reviewed on Goodreads. I've read more than that before I became a book reviewer. But, you know, since becoming a book reviewer, I've read about 700 books. And uh, only 10 of which I've given one star. So out of 700 books, 10 got one stars. And uh, this month is one of them. And that book is The Crystal Star by Vonda McIntyre. Yes, this is a Star Wars novel. To, I have a full review with a lot more in-depth about the book, but basically, I don't think any of the plot lines work. I don't think any of the characters work. I don't think any of the world building works. Oh my goodness, I can't believe that the world building doesn't work here. And the tone of the book just is does not really work. There's only like one, to me, one really solidly redeeming quality of the book, and that wasn't amazing. That was just okay. So I know other people, I know a few people who actually really love this book. Um, but for me, this was a huge miss. Like I'll honestly say, I think this is the worst expanded universe novel I've ever read. And it's in contention for the worst overall Star Wars book I've read. So I'm sorry. I did not like this one. Can't mince words. All right. Uh, now we're getting, I have three books that are like out of five stars. I gave like three. They're okay. I didn't love these books. I didn't hate these books. I just thought they were kind of okay. That's, that's what I thought about them. So, uh, the first one I'll talk about the, the middest of the books, as the kids would say, uh, I guess I'm one of the kids. Anyway, the middest of the books, it was, uh, Angel Fire East by Terry Brooks. This trilogy, the, the Word and Void trilogy, it's an urban fantasy trilogy. It just ended on a fizzle. I really do believe that Terry Brooks had one solid, um, uh, book idea for the first book. And he just had a rough outline for books two and three. And it just, it just didn't materialize. It didn't need to happen. Sometimes trilogies are amazing and I love sequels and I'm so excited for them. And sometimes maybe it should have been a standalone. That's how I kind of feel with this trilogy, but what saves this book and makes it a good, more good book than a bad book is the, it has an amazing last chapter. The last chapter in this book is genuinely amazing. So I loved it. Love that chapter. That is. The rest of the book, eh, mid. All right, another of my three-star reads, and this ticked off a lot of people, including uh, Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, who called me out on his channel. He, he was talking about his highs and lows of the year, and then at the end he said, and tell me what was your worst book of the year? Unless you're Jonathan Cohn, in which case don't do that, and it was funny. But my one of my mid-books this month was It by Stephen King. I get kind of what people enjoy about this, but for me, this book just didn't work. For one, it's way too long, I think, for what it delivers. For two, I felt like um, uh, the like the like it doesn't deliver on the promise. You know, this is supposed to be a scary book about a killer clown going around terrorizing children, and it's barely in the book. That's, I mean, it's in there, 
but compared to the thousand pages page count, it's barely part of that. So you have to go through hundreds and hundreds of pages of the character development stuff, which is well written, but it's not what I signed up for. I signed up for a killer clown to murder a bunch of people. Uh, so yeah, this book just didn't work for me. And also there's just some weird stuff. And if you've read the book, you would know absolutely what I'm talking about. There's some weird stuff in this book. All right, the last mid-book. After that, we're getting to great books. But the last mid-book that I read was Mostly Harmless by Douglas Adams. I thought the book was okay. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. This is actually a reverse of Angel Fire East. Angel Fire East, I thought the book itself was not great, but it had a great ending. This book, I thought the book itself was okay. It was pretty good, but I thought it had a very bad ending, which is what left the kind of sour taste in my mouth. Um, as a series, I think that this, the, I, the, the, the nihilistic approach to this, this book series does not work, especially since it's the final book. But reading an individual book, reading books one and four in this series is totally worth it. Just as reading those two books standalone. But reading books two, three, and five, eh, not really worth it. You're not, you're not getting much out of this. All right, now we're getting into my four-star reads. I have seven four-star reads. These were the excellent, excellent, excellent books uh, that were, you know, they're not top-tier novels of all time or anything, but they're very, very good, and I really enjoyed them. And the first I'm going to talk about at the, 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 the lowest of these is Echoes of Honor. I enjoyed so much about this book but I also had such big problems with other parts. And so I gave it like a seven out of 10 overall, or it's about a four out of five on Goodreads. Um, this book could have been so much more. It's unfortunate that it's not. Um, basically, I'll say that this book is too long in certain parts and does not focus on the things it needs to focus on. But when it is focused on the correct things, oh my, is this book great. So that's how I feel about the book. Generally, this is an Honor Harrington book. It's the eighth, eighth book. The series is starting to get ginormously huge. And uh, I love the character of Honor Harrington. She's, she's great. All right. The next book uh, on this list that was also, I gave it about the same, about a seven out of 10, was Darth Bane Rule of Two. This is, this is one of the more fun reads on the list because it is, um, you know, it's a fun story that's going on. I don't think it's necessarily as great a story as... The Path of Destruction, and I'm not like a dark side guy, so I don't like focusing, reading. This happens every video now. Every video. Anyway. There we go. Um, I don't like focusing on dark side stuff, and so when it's done, it better be good. And that's why, like, Darth Plagueis is such a great book, and, uh, uh, oh, I didn't pronounce it wrong. Anyway, um, Plagueis is such a great book, and uh, uh, Path of Destruction, even though it's not a favorite, I legitimately understand why it has the, the, the place it does. This one, the story is just fine, it's good, it's not amazing. So that's why I give it like a seven out of 10. Stay up this time, please. There we go. All right, the next book I'm going to talk about that I read is Star Trek Vanguard Declassified. This is, uh, I read this for my YouTube short series. I typically do short stories, but I wanted to read this book, and this is four novellas. And I was like, you know what? I think I can get that in there. I will have a full review that talks a little bit more in depth about the book, but I did do the four shorts that, for the YouTube shorts. And so uh, this was, you know, it was, it was overall uh, an enjoyable experience. Some of the stories worked better than others. It was not an amazing book. Again, 7 out of 10. Very common theme this month. A lot of 7 out of 10s. All right. Now, moving up, we're in the... That's pretty good. I pretty much enjoyed the book. And that's going to be Timothy Zahn's The Icarus Changeling. I've been one of the most vocal fans of the Icarus saga, trying to get everyone to read it. I really enjoyed this one. I think this is my favorite of the Bane Icarus books. It has the simplest mystery to understand. And I think because that, the book feels a lot more fun. This is, I think, the most fun book in the Icarus saga so far. And this book makes some promises. Please pay off those promises, Mr. Zahn. Please. Please pay off those promises. Okay, I'm done with that. All right. Next, I read a new release book. This is Star Trek. Lo oh, that was a new release, by the way. Icarus Changing was a new release. But I read Lost to Eternity by Greg Cox. This is the new Star Trek book. I actually read this for Literary Treks. That video is already out. Um, uh, or not the video. They, uh, that uh, interview with Literary Treks with uh, Greg Cox is already out. And this book 
is about the disappearance of Jillian Taylor. It's about a podcaster in 2024 who is looking about the disappearance of Jillian Taylor in 1986. And it's brilliant. It's so much fun. And there's some other storylines happening here that aren't as great. But oh my goodness, the mystery, or I should say reverse mystery, because we know what happened to Jillian, but our main character doesn't. Oh, it was great. And there's such great twists. There are twists in this book that... Like, I didn't see coming at all, but once they happened, I was like, that's genius! That makes so much sense! Oh, I can't wait to talk to people about this one. That review should be up soon. All these, by the way, every single video, or every single book on here will be reviewed at some point. My reading review video typically comes out before any of the actual book reviews, because I film about a month in advance for the channel, uh, because... Uh, I film a month in advance so that if I ever get sick or something ever happens, like I have to move or something, I want to have a buffer zone. So uh, the only videos that I don't record a month in advance are the um, uh, the reading reviews. So you're seeing this before any of these book reviews come out. So you're getting a, a, a sneak peek at my thoughts on the books. But um, so anyway, that book review will be out eventually. And it was so much fun. Now, I also read the most stressful book of the month, not because it was bad, but because I was on the edge of my seat sweating bullets reading this. And this was John Grisham's The Associate. Basically, a, uh, a young 25-year-old new lawyer is basically blackmailed by uh, this group that wants him to go and steal secrets from a New York law firm. And oh boy, I was so stressed during this in a good way. In a good way. I felt for the main character and the other characters in the book that are being blackmailed. It's so good. Such a great book. John Grisham, he gets all the accolades because he's just that good an author. He's he's rising up that favorite author's list very quickly. All right. Now, the last of the four stars I'll talk about was a, a self-pub uh, book or at least indie pub. Uh, I don't know if it was originally completely self-pub, or I don't know how all that works, but I'll say it's an indie pub at least, and that is Michael R. Miller's Ascendant, and this was a, I was so shocked by this book. This is a fun, yet light, yet dark, epic fantasy read about a guy, about a dragon rider, basically, and you have, uh, the dragon is blind, which is, like, totally unique, and I, like, was really interested in it, and the way the book, the, the description I will give for the book is, it, it, it is, uh, if an Anne McCaffrey story with Brandon Sanderson magic system with uh, how to train your dragon vibes, but the dragon can talk telepathically. That's about that's that's the that's the pitch for the story I would give, and it works on all those levels. I'm not a hard magic f fan. I loved the hard magic here. It was, this is a very very rare time that happens. I absolutely had a blast with this book, and I'm so glad that uh, Michael R. Miller's team sent it to me because I had such a fun time. So I will have that review on the channel eventually. All right, now we are getting to my top two books this month, and my number two book easily could have been book of the month. Um, if it hadn't been for my number one book. And my number one book blew it out of the water. So, but my my number two book, this is a top tier, five out of five star read. And that was Fable Haven by Brandon Mole. This is a middle grade fantasy book. This is so much fun. Basically, these two kids are, their parents go on a vacation. And so they're sent to their grandfather's farm. And what they don't know is that their grandfather has a bunch of magical creatures that live on his farm in secret. And there's basically this whole magical world that is like totally unknown that the kids stumble upon. And it is, you know, kind of, you kind of like the Harry Potter books get a little bit dark, even though they have that fun, whimsical feel. That's, that's this, this book gets super dark at the end, but it, you know, it, kids can handle it. And it's, it's still that fun, whimsical feel. And I think that he gets, you know, world building great. Uh, Brandon Mole gets a lot of epic fantasy feels to it. It also, like, I would say it's it's on the level of Harry Potter, but it tonally kind of almost brings in the Narnia vibes a little bit of the exploring in the new world. And then it also has uh, some elements that, to me of Magic Treehouse, but, you know, older kids, obviously, but still, this is a, you know, if you have a kid that's like, you know, 10, 11, 12, I think that's a great book, uh, for them. I, I loved it. I love the themes generally in the book. Um, there were a few small things I talked about in my review that I didn't like, but generally I loved this book. I loved it. That could have been a book of the month, but my book of the month easily 
clears all of these books easily because it was that amazing. And it's funny because uh, people... It, uh, let me just let me just go ahead and tell you. And that is The Silver Blood Promise by James Logan. This is the first book in his last legacy trilogy. This book was talked about by Patrick Leo, by Mike from Mike's Book Reviews, from a few other reviewers, like uh, Murphy Napier. And all of them enjoyed the book. But, like, I think... I think Murphy and Mike may have given it like four out of five. And I think maybe Patrick gave it a 4.5 out of five, but like they all, they all give it good reviews, but they wasn't like book of the month or book of the year or anything for them. For me, I loved everything about this book. And uh, first of all, I was drawn in by the Jeff Brown cover, which is a gorgeous cover. And this is a tour book. So tour good on you for doing a book like this. Keep hiring Jeff Brown. Hire artists like him because this is how you do book covers. But uh, uh, this book, it has so much I want in men's adventure fiction. And it, it gives me so much hope for the future of publishing. And it was so much fun. Basically, this book is about a uh, this, this the main character's father is mysteriously murdered. And there is a mystery surrounding that. And so the main character is sent to this other city to uncover the mystery. However, in order to gain information, he basically has to go on side quests. You know, this character won't help him until she gets this key. And so he has to go and get the key. And then this character won't uh, help him with this piece of information until he does this. And so a lot of this book is just the main character going on side quests in the goal of making it to the main quest. And you may think that may sound boring. It's so entertaining. And there is there is a plot for this specific book in this specific town that is resolved in this book. But there's also an overarching mystery that is laid out for the whole trilogy. And it's fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. And... I, I just had so much fun. I breezed through this book. I, you know, it has a very light magic system. So it's not really about the magic. It's about the characters and the world and the stuff. And I love the world building. I love the plot. I love the themes. I love the characters. There is a great dynamic between the main character and stuff. And I, so I have a full review, which will go into full depth on the book. But let me just tell you, this is an amazing, amazing book. The second book's cover was just released, and I am so giddy and so excited, and it's not coming out till next year, which is probably good because I have a bunch of other books to get to. But if when, like, sometimes when I new read a new fantasy book, like from, from a, a publisher or, or from a new author or something, I'll read it and I'll be like, I'll get around to the, to the sequels eventually, maybe, I don't know. I will read this sequel on day one. I will make sure that my copy is coming in early. Unless the publisher wants to send an arc for me to review, you know, because I do do that. But um, anyway, I will read that book on day one because I'm that excited. And by the way, I feel the same way about Fablehaven. I'm going to read the sequels in the next couple of months because I'm that excited about this series. Um, I will make sure it gets on my list. Whereas most of the rest of the books, even the ones I really liked... I don't feel the need to, I must read other things by this author. Or I must read the other books in this series immediately. So those are my thoughts on The Silver Blood Promise, which is easily my book of the month this month and my overall July reading review. If you've read any of these books, let me know your thoughts on them. If you're interested in reading these books, let me know that as well. And what did you read in July? Uh, did you have a good reading month? Did you have a bad one? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan. And thank you for watching.